of the car, just thank you for this this day, which is a preparation day, that leads them to your set day. So Father, be with us as we gather to in your name to press forward the mark that was given for us. Father, let your will so be done that we discover what it is before us, what's needed of you, Father. And all forgive us anything that's not of you, Father. But thank you for this time that you will be with us and steady with us. God is through all that which is, is with what to make us. And what we are what is not what we should remain. But follow your word is we shall be what you want us to be. Not what the world wants, not anybody else except you, Father. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the message. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the seventh that comes now. Father, for in the will of your will of your son, and all the power of the blessed bestowed in us, the glory of your son, and all angels that watch over us, Father, we say, Humbly we say, Amen. Again, happy Sabbath. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught about it to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Colossians, which thing I hate. To what end? Yeah. God hated that the people knew of God, but they still accepted the things of, 
of love of God, knowing that God of God is still taking on these things, just like how we always saying that we should not, as a man, we should not take upon the culture, the re actions of religion of those that are not seminarians or or not truly following the will of the word of God. It is like how in first Samuel 15 when Saul, when God called, when God told Saul to go tell the Canaanites to come among the Ammonites, cause if they among them, they shall die as them, or die with them. So, as God's people, God gives the word to de depart from these things. As we are de depart from these things, because we know what we need to avoid from these things, as, as God shares to us what, what's, what's wrong with us, what, what's, what's, uh, what's holding us back from God. So as God shows what's keeping us from him, we need to practice and do what God asks us. And with that, if we see anybody else around us doing the same thing, we need to tell them that God is not, not God's not pleased. And what that person is doing is definitely not pleasing God. We all, we all have to please God. That's our main purpose in life. We are not to get cars and houses, raise children, call it the American dream or travel around the world. Our real purpose is to do God's purpose, God's will. Amen. As we know, God is a, a consuming fire. That's when he comes. Um, that's why um, when, he turn, when he comes, the world will burn up. You know, this within the world, they will they will burn up or they just burn. People that just burn, they are, they are the ones that are with Christ, with God. The ones that burn up, they are the ones just like the elements of firmness of the world because they, they are a part of the world. But God's people will not burn up, they will burn forever because we know his kingdom is like fire. As it says in Revelation 15, it says the, the, the ground was laid with uh, glass, mixed with fire, and and how did Elijah leave? How did Elijah leave this earth? In fire with the chariot. Exactly, a fiery, fiery chariot. But when God tells us something, just like a parent to a child, we take we need to take these things to heed. Because from we, we know who our parents are, we know who we are. And like I know who my mother is, I know her last name is Wallace, so I saw my Wallace, and I know who my father is. His heart is King Brown, so my last name is Brown as well. Uh, but I know who I am. As we are children of God, we know that as the Father bestowed in us promises that we we no man can have without God. So we know we are privileged and inherit we are inheritors as like the Romans eight um, seventeen says, as we are children, we are orphans, but as you said in John that when I leave I will not leave you orphans. I will leave the comforter. Well, that we shall not be orphans no more, but as in Romans 8, 17 says that we are inheritance. We inherit, inherit that God has for us. But this word right here is not ours. It's not even for us even desire. When we see people with houses, cars, fame, and all that, we should not want these things. It's nice to have um, um, the things like nice houses, but like this, though, <coughs> The early, the early song says, no more, more problem, no more apology, no money, no problems. But when God, when God comes down, to like a parent with a child, God's telling these things because we are close to him. As we're close to him, he, is, he tells us everything that we need to know. It's like how we know in Amos, uh, uh, and yep, in Amos it says that, I'm my servants, my prophets, I will tell them all the secret things is and um, and God will not leave us God will not leave us in darkness or even live with orphans. God wants to bestow on everything on us. As in Jesus said to the disciples that uh, y'all know y'all know we are no longer servants of God. We are friends of God, we are children of God, and for which we are friends and children of God, He will tell us everything that we need to know. As it's like a husband, if he does anything behind his wife's back, and the wife, when she finds out, 
she'll be disappointed of the fact that the husband good couldn't even uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? He couldn't even uh, communicate. Huh? communicate. Not the word communicate. You close with it, but it start with C. Uh, 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 he could not come. Uh, he cannot come to her and tell her what it is. Like if the husband had a uh, fetish with going shopping all the time and knowing the situation they are having, the wife just asked him, "Could you do something?" And he Eventually, he feel like he ashamed that he keeps so to himself, as we know. And John says that what's in the dark shall be brought to the light. What should be brought to the light is the fact that we are we are chosen God, as in Romans two thirteen through eighteen says that as we are chosen God, we shall not take upon whatever is not of the world. As we know these things are not of God, we shall not even take upon it. It's, it's that which a God is, is the pleased. Um, We know when our parents tell us something, we ought, we ought to. Never mind. We better do that what they say, even when we have company. They better mind too. Remind me of this uh, song I'm gonna have my wife play later on tonight uh, by Breath of Life uh, Quartet, old song. Um, even uh, back to the fact that even when the company come over, somebody you know comes over, they might have, they better mind as well, being one uh, being line. As we know in the commandment says, anybody in your, in your gates, pretty much as Jesus says in Matthew, you, who is your neighbor? Somebody that's around you or next to you. As somebody is our neighbor, we need to, they are within our gates. We need to tell them about God. It's like um, today I was with Brother Blackwell, uh, one of the friends, uh, Mr. Brown, uh, I Billy or Ben Brown, uh, I the name, but the first name, but he said he had, his son is autistic. His son, his son works at the Pizza, Pizza Hut. And he's back there. He's not. He's he's mostly in the back house. He don't like he don't like to communicate with people. Or uh, he's you know when you have autist autistic, you're uh, you're not really. Um, a uh, uh, person, people, person, so they have him in the back. He, he don't mind, as long as he has a shit, but he's in the back folding boxes and putting stuff up away and clipping, cleaning the parking lot and stuff like that. But as as he was in the back doing what he was supposed to do, the young people up, up in the front going out of cursing. And, and this, this, what's so bad about it? Is somebody with the like, like a mind, friend like that, knows better. He goes to the gentleman, <coughs> his co-workers, and tell him that they need to stop cursing. That's not right. It's wrong to be cursing like that. And it's not the fact that in his, per in, his per in his presence, not in the fact that he's around or if they're at the job or a customer's around. It's the fact that God hears them all. God, they displease him. God, this how we know and the word of God says, when we know wrong, we do wrong. It's like coming, just cursing across a fresh. But as this autistic young man goes to these gentlemen telling that this, what they're doing is wrong, the all the talking vulgar is wrong, um, he stands up and stands out. Stand, it's like how the three Hebrew boys, uh, Hannah, Misha, and Nazareth, stood up and kept standing, not bowing down to any idol or doing anything that's, uh, that's contrary to their God. So what is it called when we have something and with we have something that we share um, and we distribute we, and with others we distribute. Uh, it's looked out, but what is it? Um, what's it called when somebody has something and they want others to have some of it, so they distribute to others? What's it called? To share, we are sharing. And that's what these people in Revelation 2, 13 and 18 was doing. And they was not just sharing, they were sharing bad things. Like how, it reminds me of how people, um, somebody, somebody, somebody comes up to somebody saying, do you have a cigarette man? And the dude says, 25 cents or a dollar. And that makes no sense. 
paying for pay for that. But that's what happened in Revelation two thirteen. Somebody somebody didn't want it, but they they was given bad stuff. And it was displeasing God, it's not the fact the person was giving it, giving it, but the fact that the person who was receiving no better. As like I said later on tonight, hopefully my wife can pull it up and play it, so we all can be on the same same accord. And what's it called when somebody is sharing something? I mean, distributing something is sharing, or they share, especially that what God told us told us to share with others. But when in Revelations, the people that were, they got the word from God, it was not. It was like how Hezekiah was not giving the words to those that came to him. They were those were one, those ones receiving the bad stuff. They should have been given and refuting that what they received. But God people should be sharing what God given them. It's like how I always mention. I mentioned back in the, in the in the ver, uh, in the in the vesper that um, that um, um, I think is are we ready? Um, is when uh, I was talking about how Moses was many things that Moses did. For one, Moses went, heard the word of God, and he followed the word of God. And he himself, not by not led by himself, but led by the spirit of God, he climbed up the up the mountain. And he had, at first he had um, at first it's, it's first we die by ourselves, and we then we think we need somebody else to help us out. But eventually, as we know, Moses went up the mountain. Who was with them? Joshua was with them. Eventually, uh, God told him. You can do it by yourself, Moses. No, no, so Moses, finish up the finish rest, finish rest up the of the mountain by yourself. So until Joshua stay here, so uh, Moses came up. So when they come to the knowledge of God or the presence of God, then as God gives the word, God declares the word. He fills it, fill sign like the old uh, sing one song, sign still delivered. It's ours to tell the world. God wants us to come to Him again. God wants us. God wants us to come to really know Him, to really know of Him, or just understand Him. Then receive that that um, what that receive that was that cannot be erased. Um, erased. Destroyed or done with. It's like the Ten Commandments. They cannot get rid of it. They can't erase it. They can't. They they can't destroy it. It's permanent. It's not. Just, it's not just on stones. It's not on paper. It's not on the courthouses. It's in man's hearts, which is if it is a man's heart, it's in his mind, which in a man's mind he will not sin, sin against God. So as Moses took the word of God, as when we take the word of God, we need to go to the world, tell the world of God's promises. As Moses came down from the mountain with the two tablets, and he showed the people the word of God, but the first time, and, um, and his, even we, seven Baptists, there's Moses, we also sometimes break the law. Then we get punished for it, and by the mercy of God, God says, come back, come to me, to know me again. And as I chase on you, you chase it to me. So we know what happened when Moses came down the mount. He got mad through the, the, the commandments at the, the golden image. And God was displeased. And as much as Moses was displeased to see the people uh, doing all the dancing, uh, sacrificing to idols, and, and seeing the, he's even, even seeing his brother making images, and some of the Levites was part of it. But God, we know God is a God of invitation, second chances, and everything. So God. As much as, mu as much as uh, God told Moses to to the people to come up if they if they are up, if they are on God's side come up here for those that did not sing or dance to the music come on my right but those who did dance and do all that come on my left but as an aspect of God God gave the people a chance after those who did not was not on God's side they had to get. They had to get um. There was like thousands of them, um, twenty-seven thousand, thirty thousand of them died, was murdered. 
that, that day, that second hour. Mm -hmm. Then after that, as Moses was displeased with that, God told him to come back up. And not just for him to come up, but for him to cut some more, God cut for him his own hands, to cut the, the stone out himself again. But God is a God of promises. As much as God is a God of promise, God is really loving. As we know in the word of Psalms 34, 34 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good and his goodness. As we taste the, the taste of the Lord, the Lord is good, so we are willing and want to tell people of God. Rosalyn, I just got a question. How do business expand? Amen. Amen. So that's how, if you read Revelation 18, the first, the first verse, it says, uh, real quick, can you get it for me? Revelation 18 of one. I can just, I can just, I can just uh, paraphrase, it, but paraphrasing is not, not the sums of it. But Revelation 18 of one. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power in the earth, with lightning with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon is the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of devils, and hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Yes. Um, as the, the word, the word went out to the world, the world was illuminated with the glory of God, and as people were prophesizing that thing and that uh, Babylon was falling, was prophesied because of the fact that the people was illuminated and the words of God was given unto the world, given to the people. We know some might not like us or even despise us as how, uh, how uh, Cain and Abel was. Cain did his offering and some, to somewhat he came short of the glory of it. As we know, we all come short of the glory of God as, as God asked for two offerings. Uh, Cain only gave one offering. Uh, his brother gave two offerings. If you read it, it says, as Cain gave his offering, God, his brother Abel did the same. We know what, what's, the, what's the meaning of same? Identical. There you go, identical. He gave his identical, but he gave more. That's how we must come to God. We must give, and not just give, but God, as much God gave us, we need to give more to God. As Abel gave the same first offerings to God, he gave uh, his main offering and another offering. And that pleased God, but his brother, his heart was, his heart was despised, or his heart was not right with God, and he kept forward, and then, being in his ways, thinking and saying that, um, you know, when we do good, some people uh, in the world today, we got this word that they the saying is called haters. They hate us. They don't hate us, it's hate. They, they hate the fact that we're not uh, fanatics. Because fanatics, they come short of the glory of God. But those that are not fanatics, they hit the point all, all, all the time. Uh, fanatics, they despise those that know, know what's right. As, as, as it is, how, how to do that what's right, we just do what, what's right. As we're doing what's right, we tell others. As children are able to tell each other about what's before them, as um, like I, like I was saying, if uh, if uh, if your parents tell you need to do something, when somebody come over, uh, if you have a company come over, they might as well be the same thing. Cause if they don't, you know that you are gonna be in trouble. Cause you're supposed to spread the word and let them know what is acceptable, God, or acceptable in the household. Um, So we need to be telling them just, just how, just like, like that autistic young, young man was able to tell, it was, uh, 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 he just
told them that what they were saying and doing was not right, we need to be the same. Uh, we who have sense, we should know better. We know, we know better, but we still uh, want to do our own. As, um, as Cain went against his brother, as his brother went to him and told him that uh, really, when we do this stuff, when we do the will of God, the word of God, the world doesn't like it. But as we know, the saying that says the Lord, as uh, Cain was mad, and, uh, he wasn't mad at his brother, he was mad at God. And he, he didn't want to listen to God. As his brother, as his brother was uh, directed by God and for him to go tell him these things. Because it's like how I just told uh, Peter, who told you these things? You know, it hasn't been nothing but the Holy Spirit to tell you what he, what he says. After he said, after Jesus asked the disciples, who they say I am? And they said, you, you are Elias. You are, uh, you are Moses. You are this and that. You, uh, you are this and that. But then she says, who do you say I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ. You're the Son of God. And Jesus was like, wow. Uh, but he, he said, who told you this? There's only one person who could tell you that I am the Son of God. And he says, it must have been the Holy Spirit that tells these things, but when we are directed by the Holy Spirit, or we are directed by God, and God tells us to do things, we should not uh, hesitate or put it, put aside that we was asked of us. We need to go do what God asked us, even though it might cause our lives. But it's rather, uh, it's like the saying, the Matthew saying, not to be, not to fear of Him who can harm the flesh, or, uh, yep. Don't be scared of him who can harm the flesh, but fear him that can kill both, destroy both. So him that can um, destroy the flesh, we should not fear him. There's those men over, there was the 21 men that was murdered, or with their throat, throat slashed over there, uh, killed by the ISIS. They, they said as, as, they, as they went through the torture, they were singing songs unto God and prayed to God. And they lift the glory of the name of God. As the man was cutting the throats, one by one, the man was still singing songs. This, I remember that one story of how, back in Romans' time, it was real cold. And they, they what it was, they they took these Christians, instead of putting them in the arena to get killed by, uh, by uh, tigers and bears and uh, gladi gladiators, they said, let's send them to the river, where the river was cold, and force them to go in the water. And when these men was going to the water, it was like, um, I think it was 41 of them, 41 men. And in there, they put it in the water, and they were singing the song. There was like 41 men that stand for God, 41 men will stand for God. No matter what, what they do to us, 40 men will stand for God. And for hours and hours, they're singing that song. And then, next thing you know, one, uh, one gets out and not surrender, we, we, we recount, recount his relationship with God. Next thing you know, um, the song is 40 men. Um, they was not just, just singing like um, like back in the day when our ancestors used to uh, uh, pick cotton and all that stuff, singing uh, way down in the wall. But these men was yelling loud, real loud, saying, then they are saying 40 men, Center for God will not retract. Forty men of God will stand for God. And they were singing so loud. Even the 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 head uh, the head uh, soldier hearing from distance heard all that commotion. So he gets get dressed and head out to where they were. And he seen these men. This man is a center. Uh, he, this man is a Roman Roman. Uh, uh, soldier, as he hearing these men singing, 40 men at first, 41 men, but then became 40 men of God. After one rejected to get out, get out the water to get uh, get a blanket in fire, and then he next thing you know, 41 men cause cause when we stand up for God, God uh, cause what we give what is 40 40 men stand up for God to show them. All of them run that the blessing of God, even though how these men was in this cold, cold water, some will be uh, 
might might receive therefore or get hyper, hyper uh, what's it called? Hypothermia. Hypothermia. But this one Roman soldier says, forty one men standing for God as he was dry, saw his soldier arm armor and got in water with him. He said, forty one men in the water we shall not we shall not lose. And he stayed close to God. That's how we need to be. We didn't say we close to God, you know how somebody would do wrong to us. They they might they might uh, uh, they might not agree but we but we will stick close to God and do the will of God. But like uh, if you look at Sir Elijah, if you go to first Kings eighteen, talk about how uh, Elijah went to um, the king Ahab and told them that they need to get right with God because what they're doing, they worship in the Baal. And for Ahab to be raised a Christian, to be raised actually a seven active, to be raised by the Pharisees and by the counsels of God and knowing the promises of God for which he is an inheritance of a Jew. A Jewish person, so what you know, his family, his ancestor was in in Egypt, which were saved and washed through the waters, which was where the Red Sea was uh, separated. As for they walked through, they fed they, his family, his ancestors were fed with, fed with the manna, the manna that came from heaven. Then, then they also received the, the water from Moses, that from the flowing water, and in the quail, and, the, and they had known the promises and powers of God, but he easily received this how this how the person. Even we today need not to be like a hand or the people in Revelation 2, 13 through 18. We need not to take upon these things upon ourselves, as we know which is which is uh, curses. Curses of 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 Satan given unto us that which, which allow make us to be that which is Revelation 14 and it says in in um, and the letter says that we that they shall drink the drink the cup of God's wrath, which is in indignation, for which we shall not take upon these things. We need to um, we need to we need to not to um, there's the title uh, there's the title I will give a letter, but as we know uh, Elijah, we know of God, we know who we are. Isaiah forty three seven. Can you read that for me, sister? Isaiah 43, 7. Isaiah 43, 7. It really, everybody needs to read the whole Isaiah 43 all the way to 16. It tells us who we are. And if a person is singing, they think they, they, think they just sing it for the church or sing it for God, or a pastor thinks he's just a preacher for God, or or a teacher or whoever, a mission for the person for God, but that's not our main purpose for our own life. But could you read that for me, Sister uh, 43 7, Isaiah? Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed His him glory. For him. The glory of God. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. God has made us for His glory. Not for the singing, not for the preaching, not to, not to do any other, but to give God glory to a, Edify his name. The same thing as TK is true knowledge itself. Um, there's the story of Isaac, uh, Elijah, the prophet. We are God's ambassadors. As we know of God, we know everyone and everything is is the Lord's and is said in Psalm 21. If you read Psalm 20. Four, my apology, apology Psalm 24 it says that everything is God's. The gold, silver, animals, even us are God are God's. Even a person says they, they are themselves, but they, they truly deceive themselves. And first Corinthians 4 says that we have the right to judge cause we know cause it says that we will be able to judge even angels. So we're just not judging people saying this person this and this person that, but the action of the person, because we know everybody is good, because if God didn't want us, God could have cursed Adam and Eve. And if the curse of Adam and Eve, 
the whole world would be cursed. But God cursed the ground. But later on, God was pleased with the, some things that man has done. So God took the curse off the ground. But in the beginning, God cursed the ground. So, and it's like, how a person wants to hit, how a person wants to hit somebody in the face, but instead of hitting the person in the face, he hits the brick wall. And that hurts more than he, that's, uh, he really, he hurts himself, but he, he can, he can, uh, he can control himself. But God, he didn't curse man, but he's showing God, showing man that God is loving, kind of uh, lives mercy, so he cursed the ground. But when they expect the things, later on God took the curses off the ground for which the which man is made for him, for which man is put there. For man is first put, the, put in the ground to, to rest until his coming. For as man, uh, Adam and Eve messed up for man, because we be here forever and ever. But when Adam and Eve sinned, God had to have a place for us to be until his, his cleansing. His cleansing is like eternal fire as God is eternal. But as, um, but, but, but when God tells us to go tell someone, this is the Lord, and again, some might not like it, but that's, that's how, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. No matter who. As Elijah was close to God, and God told him to go to King Ahab and um, Jezebel, even when they say, even when they say um, that we are the trouble, as um, we know after 9-11, everybody was going to church for a while. And the, the, the first move was to go to church because they're seeing all this trouble. Like the 9-11, everybody was going to church. I know people was going to church. I can't lie. I, I didn't go to church, but I was very prayerful at that time, but really I was, in, I was not even know what happened, what was going on. I was, I was thinking and saying something else, but I believe it now. But um, when stuff happened, um, people get more religious than anything, than anything. Uh, in the story of, of 1 Kings 18.1, of 1 Kings 18.1, it says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah, in the third year, saying, Go present yourself to a head, and I will send rain on the earth. God was given the last plea, the last plea, or the last rain to people. Because people were stuck in themselves and worshiping all, all idols. As we know, as, um, as um, Elijah gave the message, to the king and told king this and that, but the God that uh, Ahab, Ahab and wife Jezebel worshiped was Baal. Baal is the God of water and the elements. So when he said, for three and a half years, there will be no rain, and he said, and then he said, then I asked him, who and what God you, you told you that you stand, stand before? He said, the God of heaven and earth, and right there, that displeased, displeased uh, Jezebel, because Jezebel and them believing on one God. It's like how those the ISIS people are killing Christians because they believe in one, uh, one some other God. But they truly deceive themselves. But as Jezebel was upset, this is what she said. This those Christians. God hid Moses in the cliff of the rock. How we know later on the stories of the New Testament that God um, God took care of his son Jesus just read Isaiah and the, and the whole synagogue was very upset and they said let's kill this man he, he's nobody he, he's not no God he, he's just a uh, married son and J Joseph's son as well so let's kill him he's, he's, he's blaspheming so let's kill him so God put the head around him and people that can't even see him so as God put the head around um, Elijah and God protected him. God, as he obeyed the word of God, God took care of him. As in, we know in the story of Jeremiah, Jeremiah wanted to go to some other city. No, he wanted to go back to his own town in Abathoth. Ab 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 uh, Ab uh, God told him to go to Jerusalem. And as Jeremiah went to do his own thing, 
Um, he did what he wanted to do. He's not knowing that in his own town, his people, his own people wanted to kill him. But as he did what he wanted to do, um, he got beat up. But God took care of him. God eventually, uh, my father, I probably have to read that again. But seven day, seven day after his court come to her. And it's what it says that later on, Jeremiah makes it to Jerusalem because tragedy did happen. But in all aspects of it all, they had. Uh, then, when everything went down, um, when everything went down, um, God hit him, and when he came back around, what's the first thing that he, he had to tell Elijah? You know, it's in uh, 1 Kings 18 and 17. I'll give you some, some time to get it. Uh, what did Ahab tell Elijah when he returned? In verses, first Kings 18 and 17, what did he say? He said that when it came to pass that Ahab saw Elijah and Elijah and said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baal. Keep on. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel to Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto the people and said, How long have we eaten between two opinions? The Lord be God, follow him. But if thou, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. The title of this message is, this is actually the third lesson of it. It's called, Don't Let Anyone Tell You Who You're, who you're Not and influence you to go against that what God said. Um, as I said before, the first one is, the first sub, sec, uh, topic, I mean, the subject is, was deception. The second one was uh, to know ourselves. Um, and this one is God's word. Through God's word we are, we, we, even, we even know who we are. As much as we, we know who we are, as much as we shall share the words of God, the word of God told everybody else to know who they are. Cause the word of God is truth for everybody, not for just one person or one uh, ethn ethnic scene or religion. It's for everybody. Like if, if my mom is Baptist, my daddy is a Catholic, the word of God is for them all to obey the Sabbath and to do God's will and honor God as God said in his ten commandments. It was ten laws or his ten his ten things that he wants of us. And he got to say that to go to church on Sunday, God didn't say to do, uh, to, uh, to, um, to covet or to do anything other. It's like how somebody smoking, that's, that's going against the word of, word of God right there, is make themselves their own God. As we know in verse, in first Corinthians 6 it says that we'll go with Christ. And our bodies the holy place for the holy temple is God in, in Exodus 25, 8 says, build me a sanctuary where I, where I can dwell. And as we're born, we're born, um, we're born almost pure. But when we get older, we get contaminated with things of the world like TV, what we see, where I see. Uh, but in God says, build me a sanctuary. We know when we get a, uh, when somebody buy a house, a rundown house, they build it up. Then they put it all together. They, that's a place for somebody to dwell. To dwell is to live. Is to be there for a long time. And to be there a long time is to be with God. Um, as God's word is for the world to receive, as we know, God's word is like a tourist war that can comfort, that can cover from this, um, flesh, bone, and spirit. But also, it's not. It's not. It's like a. God's sword is not like a sword that can kill, that killed a king Saul and the son Jonathan, but as God's sword is like uh, the doctor's uh, 
scalpel to cut, to heal, but to make us greater than we are. Um, sister, I can't, can I have you read Acts? Oh no, my apology. Colossians 2 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and into all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. You know, that's what God's word is, to comfort us. To not not for ourselves, but to comfort everybody like how we're to daily seek the word of God to comfort us. Even though the enemy might have for us, but we are comforted by the word of God. We can stand on these words, these words to scope us and all that God needs to, for us to be. Um, so uh, real quick, uh, we almost ended up here. Uh, one, more, one more verse. Um, Um, can I have you read Numbers 26 to 12? Numbers 26 to 12. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. Thou and Aaron, thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them. Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation therefore together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and lived these also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. You know, for God saying that, what God says is what God says. Well, I think we went over this, uh, I think we went over this, uh, the last, uh, the last uh, topic, but I think we're on this topic that, when God told Moses to uh, to speak to the rock, he didn't say go be, get the rod and beat the rock. He said go speak to the rock. That's the problem today. People don't listen and people don't want to just come, come and talk with with the with do what God asks us to. God wants us to speak to the rock. God just wants us. God do. God don't ask it. God wants us. You know the same aspect that that's why what Jesus said in uh, Matthew six, wherever you. When you pray, just know that your Father in heaven already know what you're about to ask for. Because it's, it's a concern within us, it's a concern with God. So when we pray for others, it's a concern that within God. And so God is really, it was like how Daniel prayed for the people. And and Daniel's prayer was heard, even though it was, it was delayed, but it was his prayer was answered. And I expect that how uh, Moses and Daniel went to face God, we need to go to face God and how I brought the fact that Moses well, it went up the mount and went to know of God as uh, Moses knew of God, but he got the psalm self. We, even we decide to give ourselves. We um, we play with God's love. God, we play with those that's around us. But God wants to be with us. And so, sister, can I have you go to uh, Breath of Life? Uh, you got a mind? You got a mind. So God wants us to come to Him, set our face upon upon the Lord. We set upon our, uh, our love. Our first love of God is we know in Revelation three says if you look at if you look at Revelation says they all said their first love. God is our first love, as we know in Ecclesiastes twelve. One says uh, for our, in our youth we, we need to uh, uh, know of God, know God in our youth. Because later on in life, it's going to get terrible. That's how our young men and young men are killed.
com committing suicide or going to school and shooting people up or, or going to the wrong crowd, the wrong crowd, the like the Aryan, Aryan uh, uh, black, black, uh, black people or what's it called, uh, black Muslims or people like that or people that believe in things of killing, uh, kill, uh, believe in murder and killing sacrifices and stuff like that. But it's not a God, but God said, God said, um, come unto me. I will show you and give you these words, and these words will comfort you. These words are like a tourist war, and these words are comforting. These words are to share with everybody. But first, come unto me, such a faithful before me, and love me, that I have loved you. So, God saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. Or other words, as we know, in God, there is perp, there's promises. There's promises in God. As God told me that. Serpent and say it will be crushed. And don't let it, don't let anyone tell you who you're not and influence you to go against the word of what God said. to um, Mark 4, 4, I mean Mark 4, 24. Then you scale backwards to Matthew 12, 36. The first Mark 4, 24. said unto them, Take heed that ye hear, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Now Matthew 12, 36. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 
Tell drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for it, to devour her child as soon as it was poor. So what happened to the third angels? He cast to the earth. You missing the main part. They became part of the tail. They believed the tail. They went within living, living the tail that was cast out of heaven, the perfect thing in this world. And they never they um, they got ripped up in the tail. So Satan is trying to give us these false lies, false accusations, and he's just trying to confuse the world. It's like how Daniel, Brother, Brother Blackwell, and his friend, uh, something, Brother Brown, they were talking about how um, this world, um, how the those young man was doing a curse around his son, his son, with autistic, with this autistic uh, mentality, we didn't told him that's not right. Uh, and how you and I, seeing that young lady with the cuts on her pants. And we know, I said back in the day, if I walk around with, with my pant cut pants, I'll be considered poor, or uh, I'll be, um, or that wouldn't happen, because back in the day that where our pants cut, that was an accepted cause. We was considered we poor, or we're, we're bringing bad uh, images upon our families, or that means we need new clothes. But now these young people, young ladies, young men, walk around with pants that's too small, look like they should give it to their, um, these grown men that's 20 some years old look like they should give it to their 10 year old brothers. Um, these young ladies uh, wearing these holy pants, um, as Don never said, it's part of that what they are, um, they're trying to show their flesh, but really, back in the day, that was, a, that was not called for, but today, you know, it's, What's good, what's bad is good, what's good is, uh, is not looked upon. But Satan is always looking toward to accuse us, accuse us to God day and night. Don't give him any ammunition, but seek the power of God. Um, follow, seek the word of God, seek the, seek that which of God, which is of God. God's word is, is like a Torah sword that we should share, that is comforting. And then we allow us to come to the presence of God as we, like every Saturday, uh, 7 o'clock, um, Central, Central Standing Time, we have this call called the King's Sons and Daughters of the Storm. And that's the call. Uh, you will call 712 432 1500, and that's code 922423, star, I mean, pound, and you will, you will be blessed. We're praying hardly for what our nation is. But as I'm making forth, that Satan is always looking forward to accuse us, the accusing of the brother. But as in God, we just can stay close to the word, and God is always giving us ammunition to go against the enemy. As he says in, um, what's that in uh, Ephesians 6, he says, he, God will give us a shield to protect us from that, which the enemy send those fire darts at us. But we got the word of God, and the, the word of God in the song, that which he carries us. So, at this moment, as we're concluding this message right here, we are moving into the closing of our hymn. Six twenty-three. Six twenty-three. The Sunday Adventist uh, hymnal. 